Dark Side with Bob Dealey. My name is Rick Baker, and I will be one of the announcers for the Madina Invitational Tournament. During this past summer, we have been broadcasting past MIT tournaments. As many of our viewers know, the MIT started in 1974 and is considered to be one of the most prestigious tournaments in the state of Ohio. This tournament has showcased hundreds of outstanding wrestlers and what they have done during their high school career. My job for this broadcast and future broadcasts will, will be to provide the viewing audience just brief bios on what these athletes did collegiately and what they might be doing now. With that said, let's get ready to watch some outstanding wrestling. Well, we're honored once again to have the privilege to talk to Lynn Hotelling, who is the really the key motivator behind this entire Medina Invitational Tournament, the greatest show in wrestling. She's the one who makes it happen. I know from experience, having dealt with her in the past, and even though she's officially the assistant tournament director, everybody knows Lynn's the one who makes it happen. Thanks for having us back again, Lynn. Thank you. I'm really honored to have you up here again this year. We have a lot of Columbus fans that come up for the tournament, several Columbus teams, and we're always, it's always nice, and you're a great host for the state tournament each year, so we appreciate it. Well, thank you. How's the tournament going this year? We've run very well this year. We've run, uh, first day, we ran almost an hour ahead of schedule, which was very nice. Everybody could get some extra rest, and we had some super matchups from the quarterfinals up. Why don't you tell us about some of those matchups, if you would? Um, good question. <laughs> You're, feel free to review your notes. Yeah, feel free to refer to my notes. I'd be glad to. Let's see here. Um, we had a junior high state champ going up against St. Ed's. Only, he only lost 19 to 7. You know, that's pretty good for a freshman. Mm -hmm. um, 152 was our most loaded weight class. It was just outstanding. We had Kusar from CBCA, who was third in state, knocking off another state qualifier. We had a state alternate knocking, uh, going up against Jesse Dong from Columbus, from Columbus uh -huh. the state runner-up. And Heflin from Perry had beat Tank from Oak Harbor, who was a state placer last year. And um, Gregor was a state, to, and it was, just, it was a stacked weight class. Excellent. Well, we're looking forward to seeing the finals tonight. And uh, we, we know there's going to be some exciting matches and some involving some Columbus kids. Now, this is the 33rd year yes. of the Medina Invitational, 33rd. right? Yes, it's the 33rd year. Have you been involved every one of those 33 years? I've been years? here since 1989. Which uh, is uh, pretty close to 20 years. Almost right? 20 years. Wow. Um, and we were talking earlier, of course, this is the 50th year of wrestling here at Medina High School. And uh, now you, of course, were born, I think, the year that... Yes, <laughs> the, I was born in 1958, so I'm as old as, the, I'm old as Medina Wrestling. Uh -huh. How's the team doing this year here at Medina? Uh, we've had our, some ups and downs. Uh, we've had one of our top kids injured. Um, we have two on, we'll have two on the podium tonight, which we're real excited about. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our wrestlers lost his grandmother this week, so he didn't wrestle, one of our top kids. So, you know, you, you, know, you have your ups and downs. Some of the other teams had injuries and um, other issues that kids couldn't wrestle too. So that's just the nature of the sport. Yeah, that, that's the way it goes. Now, I know that there's a tremendous amount of work that goes into making this tournament happen. Give us some idea. When, when do you actually start working on next year's tournament? I announced the dates this morning. So uh -huh. next week I'll be starting to get the applications out for the teams. I have already have interest from two additional Michigan teams to come down next year. I have a team that was here today that wants to get back in the tournament. So it's the... It's already starting to compile. And you'll be working from now until, until a year from December, now yes. in order to make it happen. Yes, exactly. It, it's, it must be almost a full-time job at times. Oh, it can be. And this year was more of a challenge. I was working full-time up until Friday. I was, um, I'm, a sub, I'm a support substitute for the Medina City Schools. So I was working a full load on top of wrestling and two kids. Well, it's amazing that you make it happen. This, of course, is like the grandfather of, of holiday tournaments, and uh, you've innovated so many, so many things here that have 
become part of uh, part of wrestling, the way wrestling works and wrestling tournaments work. Uh, we can get into that, but I don't think we have the time. But but uh, suffice it to say that uh, what you do here at Medina and with your tournament here, the Medina Invitational Tournament, uh, is quite exemplary, and we're very proud of you. And I'm proud to have once been a part of this Medina High School <laughs> myself. So thanks once again, and uh, good luck tonight. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the finals. I know we will. Good evening, and welcome to Matt Side with Bob Dealey. This is Eric Loveman along with Bob Dealey. Bob? Howdy. Yes, sir. Well, tell us where we're at, Bob. Uh, I think we're in La La Land. No, we're in Medina, <laughs> Ohio, one-time B capital, candle capital of the world. B capital of the world, that's right. AI, AI Root Company made Medina, put Medina on the map. Okay, and there's also the home of Carl Abel, uh, a very prominent family here in the dairy business. Carl wrestled with me back in 1948 B.C., not A.D., <laughs> on the Ohio State team, and yeah. he was quite a competitor as a heavyweight, a great gentleman, and a credit to the Medina community. And just to go full circle, he was my assistant coach in high school. Wow! When I was here, water from. when I was here at Medina High School, this is my uh, my alma mater. And uh, but uh, we're here for the Medina Invitational Tournament, the 33rd year of the Medina Invitational Tournament. And uh, it looks from based on what we've seen of the brackets for tonight, some really good matchups. Okay, I'm sure you've had your shop senses working overtime to highlight those matches that we can give full consideration and give our enthusiastic summary of. Well, let's jump into it. Okay. His opponent tonight is Justin Toth. Justin placed fifth in the state in 2007, but what's more amazing is that he wrestled with a prosthetic leg. Collegiately, he wrestled at Lake Erie College, and he's currently an assistant coach at his alma mater. Okay. Hi, how are you? Good luck tonight. Okay. Bob, at uh, 103 pounds tonight in the championship match, we have Justin Toth, T-O-T-H, T -O -T -H, from Painesville Riverside. He was ranked fifth coming in tonight, in this uh, seeded fifth, I should say, in this tournament, against the sixth seed, which is Gus Seiko from St. Edwards. Okay, uh, Toth got an underhook. I mean, Seiko got an underhook. Oh, great maneuver. But you got to do your wrestling on the mat. Yeah, we have Seiko's in the black, black singlet, Toth in the, uh, the white, gold, and black uh, stripes there. What grade is Toth? St. Uh, Edward kid. Sure. Why'd you ask? Toth is a senior from Painesville Riverside. Uh, Seiko is only a sophomore at St. Edward's. Neither okay. one placed in the States last year. Uh, oh, Toth. great maneuver. Great maneuver. Floated around very effortlessly. Seiko of St. Ed, 10th grader. Just a sophomore. 21 and nine, uh, 29 and one last, uh, last year, Seiko was. Talk. Now what Tote's got to do is throw that hip over that knee there if he can. He's got it. He's in good shape. They're in a wizard series, fighting off a low wizard series here. Both of them have a good slag there, outside leg slag. A very interesting situation. Oh, that's good. Go for the head. Try for a double. You can't stay still. You flatten out. Put that outside leg up. We're talking about Toth. Good series there. Right. Toth leads two to one with 25 seconds left in the first period. Toth is undefeated this year, Bob. Oh, yeah, Thir okay. 13 and 0. Uh, Seiko uh, is nine and two this year. Well, they're in a heck of a series. Two points. Nice blow by, by Seiko of St. Ed's. Oh, 
There'll be 135 pounders next time out. <laughs> in, in, a, in a year or so. He's pretty, pretty big for a three pounder. They're big boys. Score is four to one, starting the second period. Seiko Saint Ed's is sort of the aggressor at this point here. Oh, beautiful takedown. And he's just a sophomore. Leading over the senior at Toff. He's got a deep waist ride. He's going to try a tilt surge here. Changes off. There were, there were four. There's a tilt. Did it very efficaciously. Set it up real nice. Put that hip in there, the knee, took his man over for two more points. There were four state placers seated ahead of these two in, today, in this tournament. Uh, neither one of these placed in the states last year, so that's uh, kind of an interesting statistic. St. Ed's, I think, 112-pounder this year was their 103-pounder last year. Uh -huh. we'll, we'll see. Okay. So we're seeing dominance here by St. Ed's Gus Seiko. 52 seconds to go. Got a nice underhook. Takes his man. He can change, to, change the other side. That's good. You go side to side. Showing marked dominance at this point here. Takes a Puts in a high turk. Got a nice face lock, changes off. Scores nine to one now with 30 seconds left in the second period. Seiko leading. Toth is uh, one of only two seniors in this late class. Very unusual to have a senior at 103. You're right. Very astute uh, comment there. They usually outgrow I'm 103. I'm sorry, he's one of three seated seniors. One of three seated seniors out of uh, roughly 25 seated wrestlers. Well control of his destiny with a nine and one advantage. Okay, there we see Mark dominance at this stage of the match. So score is still nine to one at the end of the second period. Okay. Tote up for on the feet. Seiko likes to control the rip. Let's see Tote the May Payne Riverside changing strategy. Doesn't do him any good. Sort of had a tripod stance that didn't help it at all. Under the scoring system, explain how if you win by... You notice he's missing a leg. Oh yeah. Right leg, man. The right leg, he's short a leg. Ooh. Mention that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. Now we know why he was in that tripod. <laughs> oh, and we didn't. It's, didn't even catch didn't, it. Didn't even notice it. Very what? unusual situation here. Yeah. We have a man with a uh, right leg injury or handicap, and here he's wrestling in a final. That by itself speaks miles of gratitude and toughness. I think it's incredibly fascinating that neither one of us noticed it up to, at this point. Well, we're at that stage where we missed those two. <laughs> well, that, that, that may be a factor, but I think one of the things I love about wrestling is it's a sport that accommodates people with all kinds of handicaps. Blind wrestlers, deaf wrestlers, wrestlers who, who are missing limbs, and, and uh, uh, it's, it's just incredible how the sport can accommodate those kind of wrestlers. A 
11 to 1 with 11 seconds left in the match. Okay, here we see St. Ed Seiko coming out on top. But again, the outstanding feature here was Justin Tooth, the Payne Riverside Wrestling. He took the darn leg off. Look, now it's yeah. back on. Yeah, put it back on. That's why we didn't notice, probably. Our next match this evening is at 112 pounds. We have Jamie Clark versus Sam White. Sam wrestled Jamie again in an epic state final, which was a 3-2 overtime win. Sam is a two-time state champion. He transferred from Illinois to Notre Dame College and wrestled for current coach Frank Romano. Jamie, another outstanding wrestler from St. Edwards was a three-time three state champ, and he went on to wrestle at the University of Illinois. Okay, Bob at 112 pounds. This is one of the premier matchups for tonight. Really looking forward to this match. A couple of underclassmen, Sam White, a junior from Maslin Perry, wrestling Jamie Clark, just a 10th grader from St. Ed's. But these kids are both ranked nationally by Intermat Magazine. All right, can you give us? Uh, and the thing is, they're wearing almost identical uniforms. So <laughs> the only way you can differentiate is the um, ankle straps and headgear. I think uh, the, the P big on the, P. Yeah, the big P. Yeah, That's Sam P White from Maslin Perry with the big P on his back. Sam White is ranked was seated number one in this tournament. He's ranked seventh nationally at 119 pounds, but he's wrestling 112 today. Jamie Clark is ranked fourth nationally. So these are two highly ranked, highly ranked kids and they're both underclassmen. Sam White was a state champion last year for Massillon and Perry. Jamie Clark was a runner up, both okay. at 103 pounds. Okay, what we saw there was a takedown on the out of bounds line. They would have to have at least two supporting legs or features there, and it was there. Okay, Sam White has to come on out. Got to turn into the man. Got to turn in. Okay, Clark on top, St. Ed's. Score still two to nothing. 40 seconds left in the first period. Why doesn't wrestling a, a smart match at all? They're asking uh, the officials for Maslin Perry thinks there was hand clasping there. But we're seeing here is an energetic Jamie Clark my information is right, I think White beat him in the final for the state last year. Well, they took first and second, so that, yeah. would, that would be a, a pretty good... Uh... Well, they're going to meet again, probably, for the finals in the state. Uh -huh. At 112. Uh -huh. In Division One. If they both stay at 112. Well, they'll stay there this year. Now, what we're seeing, lack of arm control by Sam White. Okay, Clark's in the down position. Sam White of Mary Esselin Perry in the top. Nice, easy escape. Three to nothing. I think what we're seeing right here is determination, the number one factor. Now, White doesn't know how to limp arm out of there. Okay, the coaching staff is imploring White to go after his man. He's got a snap. Neither man is snapping. Yeah. 
Watch, his feet didn't move there. He had an arm tie up. All right. Now he's got to go into the man. In, 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 in. I wish Tony would move so we could see. They're out of bounds. And in college, they'd still be in bounds with one foot in. Yeah, in the there's circle. a difference I now. I don't know how they do it in high school, do you? So, Jamie Clark from St. Ed's leading three to nothing. Second period, back on the feet. And the defending state champ from 103 is uh, down by three points. Clark, the 10th grader from St. Ed's versus junior Sam White from Massillon Perry. Fighting for inside position, White is trying to blow by. Still three to nothing. 29 seconds left in the second period. Well, it looks like White is getting his act in gear. He was sort of let lethargic. Now he's coming on a lot stronger. He's got a lot more head snap, but he's got to use those hips to spin simultaneously. Now, right there, you got to keep going. He quit, he quit going. He should have been circling two, three times there. Mm -hmm. Trying a leg tap. That ends the second looks, period. Looks like a stalemate there, and time runs out. Still score three to nothing. Jamie Clark of St. Ed's leading Sam White of Massillon Perry. A rematch of last year's state championship match at 103. Okay, White's a lot more activated now. Got a crotch lift. Do what we call a Hellickson crotch lift. <laughs> Take him on I, I over. I would say Clark's in a little bit of trouble here, but oh, they no, that stalemate. Oh, that a stalemate. So. He's out. He's out. There's a one. Right, if it Three takes to one. him down, we'll tie the score. It's a two-point match. He's doing a lot of head snapping, but not violently. Yep. Minute 20 left in the match. White's in charge there right now. He's got the momentum. Well, he needs two points just to tie it up. Yeah. He's got the tide of battle that's turned his way. Now, whether... Clark and defense. See, the ref should be warning Clark right now yeah. at this stage. And Clark is smart. He's playing the edge of the mat. He's he's not being he's not being aggressive, and that's uh, that should be a stalling call. Huh? Oh! Wow! No, he, he I, blew it. The supporting points were in. Hmm? The supporting points were in. Nice limp arm. 38 seconds left in the match. White still down by two points. Okay, but see he's playing the edge of the mat. That's the Cleveland stall. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, perfectly positioned to play. They yeah, get delayed a stalling call. 22 There's seconds. only 20 seconds left in the match though. And White is down by two points, so. Clark, Clark is out of gas, he's out of gas. Well, he's still wrestling a smart match. Yeah, he's going to the edge. Yeah. Look he's, at that, he's going right to the edge. And only 15 seconds left. Oh my, look at that. Oh boy. That's five okay. to one. Well, we saw Time runs out. a strategic match wherein Clark Initially gained advantage, then withstood a charge, and then finally came with the final two second two point takedown. So uh, a bit of an upset. Sophomore Jamie Clark from St. Ed's over Sam White of Maslin Perry, a junior. These will these two will be around for a while. 
At 119 pounds, we have Cody Garbrandt versus Kyle Cicerello. Cody was a 2007 state champ as well as a 2008 runner-up. In 2010, he was named a senior national All-American. Currently, Cody fights in the UFC 2000 or 207 and is an MMA instructor. Kyle continued wrestling at OU and graduated in business management in 2012. He works for a manager for Al Averis International in Cleveland. Okay, Bob, at 119 pounds, we have an interesting situation. We have a defending state champion from Claymont, Cody Garibrandt. He's the number one seed, even though he's a sophomore at 119 pounds. He's wrestling an, an unseated senior from Rush, Kyle Cicerello. Cicerello. <laughs> Cicerello, okay. That's a basketball coach, remember his name? Okay. Chickarello, okay. Good, Matt. Okay. Clay Mudd's in the white, white singlet. Oh, beautiful little single. That's Cost the sophomore, that Cody. Oh. My goodness. I'll tell you what, he's been trained by the guy that took Cody, the Ohio State youngster. I can see that already. That was pretty dominating. Look at, look at the way he walked. First 16 seconds of the match. He's gonna give us a... What happened here? Oh, he let him escape. Well, Kyle Ciccarello. And it's a sophomore against a senior. And the sophomore uh, looks pretty impressive the first few seconds of the match. Yeah, he went out there and showed dominant. Yeah. It's a bit of a height advantage. Okay, Chicarello oh. hits a nice front headlock. Uh -huh. Oh, this guy's a high risk boy. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, this is but I like the way he walks to the center of the mat. It's his mat, see? Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't look too good in that series of uh, takedowns there, the second one. Look at that, look at that. He's doing just like uh, My goodness. Tony. See now, he, sh he doesn't know how to leg out there. Yeah, now he's got it. One minute left in the first period and scores three to two. Claymont in the lead. That's Cody Garibrandt in the white singlet. Uh, I like his ride. He's got, he's got a vicious ride there. Excuse me, the score now is four to three. Four to Look three. at how tight he's got that. Yeah, yeah. Now he's going to try to hit a cradle combination, change off. Watch. The reason for this was because he didn't get kicked. Not only that, he's got that long, lean figure he can mm -hmm. transcend the mat there. And he's using his height to his advantage for sure. Yeah, he likes that crab ride. Six seconds left to score four to three. He's been Cody. trained by the same guy that had Spawn Teller, I could tell. Oh, okay. He doesn't have Spawn Teller finished, but he's only a sophomore. I like the way he walks. It's very presence on the mat. Go back. Well, let's see how he explodes. Oh, okay. Well, the first two weight classes have been one. Look at this. Uh -huh. Whoa, baby. Oh, Look at this. Oh, my. Look oh, at that. Man. He took adversity, did a high roll job, went to his back, came out. This is great. We got somebody that's spectacular. These guys are fun to watch. Yeah. This is what makes wrestling great when you get a kid like this. He needs a lot of uh, training, but boy, 
he got some throws that are magnificent. Uh -huh. So the first two, the first two weight classes were both won by sophomores, and uh, sophomores ahead in this match, seven to five now, with a minute twenty-five left in the second period. Go, Matt. His number one problem, he's not moving his feet. It's stationary on, off of a uh, tie-up there. You gotta have a lot of uh, momentum there. Life is movement, movement is life. And that pertains, see now, right there. Oh, Chicarello. Let's go, man. And the light yellow. 48 seconds. Let's go, Matt. Let's go, Matt. Thirty-five go, seconds left in the second period. The score is still seven to five. Cody Garibrandt from Claymont in the lead. That was a nice kick he tried. Head snap to a foot trip. Didn't work, but at least he gave it a good try there. Go, Matt. 15 seconds hey, left in the go, second. Go. Oh. Great shrug there. Nice blow by. But uh, our boy Cody Garbrandt smoothly went by. He's not oh, home. Chicarello is keeping it close. He's only down by two points as we start the third. Go, I think. Okay. Too high. Go, Matt. That makes it a one-point match, seven to six. Come on, Matt. Go, Matt. Come on, Matt. Like I say, he's only a sophomore, so he hasn't he's got a lot of tricks, but he hasn't refined them to the point that he can execute them. Let's go, Stowell! She's making a mistake there. You don't tie up and keep those feet in motion. You push, pull, push, pull, get the momentum. Minute 20 left in the third period, still a one point match. Seven to six. Now, again, our boy. His head's out of position there. I have a funny prediction. This will go overtime. Well, one minute to go. It's a one point difference if there's a takedown. Well, uh, I figure the Bush brush youngster, Chicarello, will take him down. He'll escape and we'll go into overtime. Let's see if my prediction has any authenticity. Take down and an escape. Yeah. Tighten it up. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Let's get up. Get up. Uh, last year only took third in his district, did not place at states, whereas Gara Brandt. <laughs> Was a state champion. No score. <laughs> that that ref was crazy. Huh? That ties it up. Well, I said they'd go overtime. Yeah, yeah, you were right. They, they, they penalized them for fleeing the mat. Oh, look at this. What a match. <laughs> This is better than the 12 pound match, don't you think? More interesting, I yeah. would say. 11 seconds, 11 seconds left in the, in the uh, regulation, third period. Sure looks like overtime, okay. seven seconds. We're going into overtime. I'm a prophet without Three honor seconds. in my own country. Yeah, you were right, okay. Bob. My hat, my hat. Off to you. All right, give us a sequence here. What has to happen? One minute takedown. Then, if nothing happens, you go into the down position. I have to plead ignorance, Bob. I, okay. I, I, I'm not sure what they do in high school now. I always defer to you on those issues. Okay. Well, 
The blind are depending on the blind for support. <laughs> we'll, we'll learn together, we'll find out together. Yeah, I know the sequence. Was this sudden death? No. Yeah, the fireman, beautiful, keep it going, keep it going, keep round. Beautiful, finagle. What a fantastic maneuver. He did that on sure instinct. In other words, he just went into a high arc, came out of a sequential situation to pull the match out. Six, five seconds. Okay, we saw a vivid demonstration. Final score, 12 of to seven. High arch wrestling in overtime. Yeah, that's a third match in a row, won by a, so a third, third weight class in a row, won by a sophomore. At 125 pounds, Scott Mattingly versus Anthony, Anthony Salupo. Scott wrestled at Central Michigan. He was a national qualifier in 2013. After graduation in 2014, he went on to become an assistant coach at Eastern Michigan University in Ypsilanti, Michigan. In 2009, he was a fourth place finisher in the Ohio High School Athletic uh, Tournament. Anthony placed fifth in the 2008 Ohio OHSA State Tournament. He attended Lehigh University, where he finished second in the National Collegiate Open Wrestling Championship at 149 pounds. Okay, Bob. Now we're ready for the 125 pound weight class. At 125, we have the uh, number two seed, Scott Mattingly from Uniontown Lake. Oh, yeah. He's a uh, an 11th grader. Hey, the same guy that trained him trained number Poncho. two in the match. Right? I'm saying, I don't know. You His opponent, Anthony Salupo from St. Ed's. Salu yeah. yeah. Great referee out of Cleveland probably has a great grandson here. Let's yeah. see who Salupo is here. Well, Salupo is a, a sophomore, again, unseated. Uh, did not did not place at districts even last year, and he's uh, looks like he's going to get an early two points. It's up against Scott Madeling yeah, of Uniontown Lake. It looks like we got a stalemate. stalemate. Here, huh? Yeah. Although they're still working it. That's good. I like to see the referee let the boys do it. Mm -hmm. No score. Minute 33 left in the first period. Yeah, Sam Salupo used to be a referee out of the Cleveland area. Uh huh. A heavy set gentleman that was highly rated as a freestyle referee. So I'm pretty sure this is a Salupo that's. Oh, nice pull in. Nice. Oh, he hit a lateral drop, but he, he made a mistake going to his knee. If he would have continued that lateral drop, he could have limp arm. Ah, he didn't limp arm. But there's a lateral drop. Fireman not modified. No score yet. Fifth, a little under a minute left in the, in the first period. Okay, Salupo's really taking it to him. Again, he's got he's a worthy a, adversary in Mattingly. He's only a sophomore from St. Union Ed. Lake. Mattingly was fourth at 112 last year in the state tournament. He's a, he's a junior from Uniontown Lake. Mattingly should have this. You should have it, yeah. Uh, two points for Mattingly. Now what Irvis is telling his St. Ed kids, go out there and wrestle. What they lack in technique, just make up in determination, speed, and, and moxie. Twenty-one seconds left in the first period. Yeah, I think what we see here, Salupo's going to be outclassed, but he came out a fire and attacked him. Uh -huh. And that's what you do if you don't have technique, you just 
go out there and give it your all. Exactly. The technique will come. There's no, no, no point in saving it at this right. point. It's the last match of the tournament for these two wrestlers. Stating the obvious. Well, Chalupa wasn't even uh, given a... Uh, Way down on the seating. Uh, had he been seated, he would have been seated around the uh, 12th or 13th. Oh, look at this. He had a, see, the, he had a lateral drop, but you got to continue that lateral. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember Dave Camion of Ohio State back in 62. No, I was uh, I was in Cleveland at that time. Well, he had a lateral drop. He'd go twice around on you. He finished uh, second in the NCA. He's a professor over in Connecticut somewhere. But that's what you got to do. But he had the lateral drop about as good as anybody I've seen since the dawn of time. When you start a move, you got to finish it. Right. You got to keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep driving, keep pumping, Salute whatever. Salute trying to make up for... See, now as good a... A training to St. Ed's key. Once you split that middle, you got to go through. You got to right. pump those knees. Right. A minute two left in the second period. Oh, Maddie beautiful! Lee in the lead, but that ties it up. Ties it up, two to two. He allowed the Lupo allowed his man Mattingly to come on in, and just cleverly went by on a nice synchronized takedown. Salupo defeated Zach Davis of Davison, the number one seed in the tournament, to get to, to get into the finals. Where Davis from? It was Zach Davis of uh, Davison. Oh, Davison. Right there. I see it. Salupo won that in, in overtime. Yeah, Davison. Well, I underestimated Salupo. He's holding his own three to two. Yeah. He's only down by a point. What he's doing, he's making it up in sure effort. Mm -hmm. Although that was a clever uh, takedown he had wherein he worked off the man's initial movement and nicely reversed it. At the end of the second period, scores three to two. Scott Mattingly of Uniontown Lake in the lead. A one point over Anthony Salupo of St. Ed's. Matty and Leah Jr., Salupo just a sophomore. All right, what well, we're seeing, Mattingly showing you turn into a man, you don't turn out. All right, he's got and a four to two lead. Two point lead. Uh, Salupo can get this. Ah, the head went down. Are you thinking another overtime maybe? No, no. <laughs> two points will tie it up. Oh, Salupo is not going to. He's trying to make up in sure effort. Hopefully, uh, he'll make me a poor prop because I'd like to see the kid. Uh, uh, uh. That was sort of an in interesting tie-up, you know. He had a reverse. He had a reverse tie-up there, underhooks, reverse underhooks. A minute five left in the match. It's just a two-point match. Scott Mattingly in the white and blue singlet in the lead. Well, I thought he'd run him over. If he was on his feet instead of staying off the knees, he would have done it. 50 seconds remain. Mattingly wasn't uh, placed anyway. Salupo hmm? can score off of here. 25 seconds to go. He can, if he knows how to. 20 seconds left. Two point match. Huh? I think they should penalize Mattingly for stalling here. He's definitely just blocking. Yeah, he's blocking. 
Well, that ends that match. And time, two seconds to go. And Salupo trying hard, but. Okay, that wasn't what we call a first class match for the championship. Uh, the boys didn't have that finesse that you would expect them to have at that state of development. At 130 pounds, we have Seth Horner versus Nick Sulzer. Seth was a 2008 Ohio State champion. He attended Wren Lake College in Ina, Illinois. I don't believe that they offered wrestling, but I do know that he continued on and at the two-year college and worked in, he, I believe he went into management. Nick was a four-time state placer, winning the title his senior year. He wrestled at the University of Virginia with, with, with 102 wins and was a four-time NCAA tournament. He wrestled in four NCAA tournaments. He has his master's degree in education and administration. His two brothers also wrestle, and his cousin is Alex Boone, who played football for OSU, and now the San Francisco, San Francisco 49ers. And, uh, the 130-pound weight class is gonna feature the third and fourth seed in the tournament. That's third seed Nick Sulzer, S-U-L-Z-E-R, from St. Ed's. St. Ed's has been in all but one final uh, this evening. So we got Perry up against St. Ed's, that's good. Yep, Maslin Perry again. Seth Horner, the number four seed. Uh, Sulzer is, a, again, a sophomore. It's a sophomore against a junior. Uh, Horner is a junior for Maslin Perry. Both of these kids placed in the States last year. Uh, Nick Sulzer from St. Ed's was second at 112. Seth Horner was third at 125. Uh, they, they both have lost this, this year, but of course they go into some of the toughest tournaments in the nation uh, early in the season, holiday tournaments and so forth. Uh, Nick Sulzer coming into the tournament was eight and two. Horner was eight and three. Okay, we're ready to go. At 130 pounds, we have Seth Horner of Maslin Perry up against Nick Sulzer of St. Ed. Uh, they both have the same uniform. The differentiation is Maslin Perry's big P on the back. I'll go out on the limb and say Sulzer will win based on the fact that he manifested a lot of calmness, serenity, whereas Horner was very nervous, pacing, lost a lot of nervous energy. So we'll see, oh, he hits a nice single, low single. Okay, they're in a tie-up position. So again, we have another matchup of a junior and a sophomore. It seems to be a trend. Who's the junior and sophomore? The junior is from Maslin Perry, the sophomore is St. Ed's. So St. Ed's has a young team, so it's uh, yeah. sort of evident why they got blown out by uh, Graham in a dual Saint, meet. St. Paris Graham. Mm -hmm. They weren't decimated, they were combobulated. <laughs> and yet they have a pretty commanding lead in this tournament. Well, I don't want to reflect on the quality of the tournament, but that may be an indices of what we're seeing here. Well, when 33 years ago when this was the uh, first year of the Medina Invitational Tournament, there weren't many holiday tournaments. It was a, still a, a kind of a rare animal. But uh, certainly in the last 33 years, they've gotten a lot of competition. There are uh, a bunch Whoa, of what a nice combination. Here they got a, they're in a wizard series combination and they both had each other's legs there. Very fortunate that they came out intact. <laughs> That's very clever with the uh, corner of Maslin Perry. Now we're seeing. With 35 seconds left. 
Nice ankle pick. Again, both of these, both of these wrestlers placed in the state tournament last year. Maslin Perry, Seth Horner took third. Nick Seltzer of St. Edwards took second. Two different weight classes. Seltzer was 112 last year. They're doing some good sequential wrestling. Mm -hmm. By that I mean after their first initial move, they're still countering each other. That's an indices of your state quality. When you make a one and a half, two, two and a half, if you're three, you're a state champion. That's the criteria. So no score at the end of the first period. The Perry's been the uh, aggressor. Yeah, he's got a nice ankle pick, but uh, our boy uh, Seltzer's countered with a wizard series. Perry takes the lead, one to nothing on that escape. Nice uh, internal wrestling there. Mm -hmm. Had two initial moves. These kids two are counters. pretty even. Same, yeah. same build. Uh, very much the same build. They almost look like brothers, don't they? Almost. Yeah. <laughs> same haircuts. What they're doing there. All right, he's gonna go for that ankle pick right away. Got a minute left, second period. No takedown the first period. All right, let's see what he does here. Now why'd the referee do that? The both supporting points were in. Could he had the opportunity to take him back to the center? Yeah, but he didn't. He should have, but he didn't. So still one to nothing with 35 seconds left in the second period. In the lead is the Maslin Perry wrestler. That's uh, Seth Horner. Okay, what we're seeing here is Horner of Maslin Perry sort of initiating the move and we got a counter wrestler and Salter of St. Ed's working off Horner's penetration. Five seconds left in the second. Still one to nothing. He has a good counter to uh, give him a warning. Mm -hmm. Salter has a good counter to Horner's penetration there. Third and final period. So we're starting in the third period. Scores one to nothing. Maslin Perry in the lead. Seth Horner over St. Ed's. Try Nick to ride Salter. him out. Two minutes. Got to throw in the legs if he's going to do it. Yep. An escape Got here it. would tie it up. He's a hard rider. You can see that. Mm -hmm. He's uh, doing his best to punish. Uh, he's in bad shape opponent. now. As long as he stays below his arms, he's okay. Whoa, whoa. All right, there ties it up. One to one. This will go into overtime. I think you're right. These guys are good counter wrestlers, both of them. Low score, but they're earning their worth by countering each other beautifully. Yeah, very even match. 
One minute, five seconds left in the third period. That would have... Looks like they wrestled each other quite a bit. He got smacked. He got uh, poked in the nose. So injury timeout. All right, at this point, uh, remind everybody to stay tuned because we're gonna have Colin Palmer, uh, the only number one ranked wrestler in the country in this tournament. And in the country. Yeah, ranked number one in the country. He's the only wrestler in the tournament ranked number one in the country. Uh, from St. Ed's, he's gonna be wrestling Zach Klein from Uniontown Lake at 135 pounds in the next weight class. And uh, Colin Palmer is, uh, uh, has generated probably more excitement maybe than any other high school wrestler uh, throughout his, his uh, career. He's only a junior, younger brother of Lance Palmer at Ohio State. And, Ranked number four in the country. Uh -huh. Okay, we're down to business here. 48 seconds, score one and one. We're heading at what we call a counter wrestling sequence here. Both men are working beautifully off of each other's initial shot. I'm wondering if Man Maslin Perry's adopted the uniform. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a popular style. Uh, I, I think uh, actually everybody's adopted it from Iowa is my guess. That's a good analysis. Black, black singlets with the yellow stripes. Now we're seeing Salsa trying to penetrate, opening up with uh, less than 10 seconds to go. Oh. He can back kill, he can back kill. Seven he doesn't seconds. know what he's got. Seven That's seconds, a... four seconds. No score, one second, and timing runs okay, out. Okay, another prophetic uh, yeah. solution there. Uh, now we're told that this is gonna be a one minute overtime. If there is no scoring, then uh, they'll wrestle two 30 minute uh, matches. The more aggressive wrestler will get his choice. Okay, we saw a rather melodramatic takedown. He split the middle. And that's a win for Maslin Perry. Also the first junior, the first junior to win a to win a, uh, a weight class in this tournament. At 135, Colin Palmer versus Zach Klein. Colin Palmer is probably one of the most outstanding wrestlers that came out of St. Edwards High School. He is a four-time state champion. He wrestled collegiately at OSU. Currently, Colin runs the CP Wrestling Club, which is an elite club that has produced excellent current and past wrestlers throughout Ohio. Zach wrestled at Central Michigan University. He served on the Student Athletic Advisory Committee while at CMU. He was fifth in the National Collegiate Open Tournament at 157 pounds. In the black singlet from St. Ed's High School, ranked number one in the country by Intermat, and he's a number one on everybody's list. He's a junior from St. Ed's. He's wrestling Zach Klein from Uniontown Lake. Right, uh, seated number three, but unfortunately wasn't on the uh, early list. I want to see how uh, multi-dimensional Palmer is. Uh, now the scuttlebutt is that Palmer is somewhat injured. I don't know how, don't know in what way, but uh, he may not be wrestling at his full 100% peak. He's ro rotating. Uh, he's going straight. He should have been rotating. He's using power. Line of Union Town. Got to go with him. He's got to flow left. I mean, he's got to go. For some of our viewers, 
Match side only has a one hour time slot. For those who will pick up the next hour when you're next viewing a match side. You can either go to matchside with bobdeely.com to get the schedule for your station or look it up in your local index for your public access station. So let's go back to the match. And for uh, others who have a, a contiguous two hours, um, we'll just continue right straight on without a commercial. He's a tenacious rider, leg insert like a brother. Really putting every ounce of his physique on his opposition there. And the personage of uh, Zach Klein of Uniontown. And we have in the corner Mr. Urbis, the phenomenal coach at St. Ed's in a down year. In a down year, he's running away with this tournament. What does that say? Well, they have a good program at St. Ed's. They have had for decades now. Uh, they, they, they may not be ranked number one in the country this year, but they still have a tough team, no, no question about it. Okay, we're down to the end of the first period to score two to zip, so we don't see flamboyance yet. Hopefully uh, we see stars flying, zebras, climbing trees and bears in action. I like this kid, he's not afraid of Palmer. No, he's not. He didn't shoot the middle though, he should have shot the middle. That's a stalemate. Now Palmer should know how to leg over, he doesn't know how to leg over there. Yeah, Just did that out of sheer strength and persistence. Yeah. Four to nothing. Palmer in the lead. Minute Welcome to Metsai with Bob Dilly, wow. where we're watching the second That's half nice. of the 33rd Medina Invitational <laughs> in 2007. Where we're seeing the greatest show in wrestling. So let's watch the second half. Okay, we see Palmer indomitable. With Bob Dilly and Eric Loveman with our great cameraman, Paul Hackett. Minute left, second period, four to zip lead. I'll say this, the kid, Klein of Uniontown Lake, didn't show fear in wrestling a superb wrestler of his caliber. He's trying, he's really cranking the guy out now. Klein's gonna be, he's, yeah, gonna, yeah. he's, he's gonna be sore tomorrow. Well, you keep that elbow right in the nape of the neck there, see, like he's doing. That kid's a rubber neck kid, look at that. Three quarter Nelson. She's doing it so systematically. Yeah. Look at that, look at that. Oh. That was close. That sure looked like a pin to me. Oh. You got two back points. Kid still got an arm though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Palmer leads six to nothing at the beat. start now of the third period. All right, Mr. Klein got a lot of guts there and intestinal fortitude to take that the legitimacy of that hold could have been called into question. Look at this kid taking it to him, even though he's yeah. behind six zip. Yeah, he's not, he's not quitting, that's for sure. Seven to nothing. A minute 45 left in the match. Gonna pull him in and go by. Oh, look at that, look at that. A little uh, Kenny Chirto move. <laughs> That was a Monday move. Kenny uh, Monday? Kenny Monday. At 140 pounds, 
Richie Spicel versus Justin McDermott. Richie completed, competed at Gardner-Webb University in Bowling Spring, North Carolina at 141 pounds. He was a three-time All-American. He also won two Ohio State championships. Justin was the third wrestler in this year's tournament final to wrestle at Central Michigan. In 2010, he finished third in the National Open and National Collegiate Open Wrestling Championship. This is the 140-pound weight class. McDermott from Davidson versus Richie Spitzel of Brunswick in the white. And he's ranked 16th in the country by Intermat. His Good. opponent is Justin McDermott from Davison. This is the first time we've seen Davison, which is a high school in Michigan, uh, in the finals this evening. Spicel's a short, chunky guy up against the long, lean youngster. I think they should do the same thing, enlarge the boundaries in high school, too. Mm -hmm. Now, Spicel was a runner-up in the state tournament last year at 135 pounds. Davison from, I mean, uh, Justin McDermott from Davison in uh, Michigan uh, took third in, in Michigan at 130 last year. These are both seniors. The oh, first, beautiful. For the first time, we're seeing two seniors in the finals. Spicel takes an early 2 to nothing lead. Hit a high, I mean, uh, hit a... High crotch, really torqued it. It's hard. It's good to see a torque of that emanation. Let's see if he can hit that high crotch again. We saw Spicel. Nice match. We saw Spicel last year win this tournament at 135. Uh, that was one of the more exciting matches of the tournament, if I remember correctly. Spicel got good penetration. You remember that match, Bob? I, he upset somebody. I wasn't around. I was <laughs> recovering from... Well, it uh, may not have been last year. Maybe it was... He, he did win last year, but uh, maybe a couple years ago. Both yeah. of these wrestlers are were undefeated this year coming into this tournament, and of course they're undefeated up to this point. Somebody is going to leave this tournament with one loss. And the other will remain undefeated. McDermott's won 15 matches up to the tournament. Spicel has won nine leading up to the tournament. Okay, good job. Stay up there, don't come back down. Pretty solid yeah. performance. Four to, four to one lead at the end of the first period for Spicel of uh, Brunswick, Ohio. Got a fantastic uh, initial stance there. Mm -hmm. uh, got a lot of rhythm there. Yeah. Brunswick is a high school here in Medina County. Brunswick is? Yeah, Brunswick is just a few miles north of Medina, still in Medina County. Oh, okay. So I'm assuming it's a part of far away suburb of Cleveland. Mm -hmm. It's uh, between Cleveland and Medina, but closer to Medina than Cleveland. Oh, okay. He does a good snap down. He got a very, oh my God, he could have blown by there. Didn't know what he had there. Uh. Speaking of Mr. Spicel of Brunswick, I like his stance. See what he does, he doesn't give you as much as a, a straight stance. He can pin it, now he's gonna hit a high turk here. Come on, I mean a high crowd, hit a high crowd. Scores four to two with one minute left in the second period. And he gave him those two points. Spicel in the lead. All right, he's got a, a two on one, singlet. let's see. McDermott in the, I would guess that would be a uh, bronze colored maybe. Yellow, yellow singlet. Yeller. Okay. <laughs> As the Hill folks would say. Yeah. 
Light yellow. All right, let's see your high crotch. You haven't shown us more than once. There it is. Uh, oh, that's better. Got his head snapped down. Oh, Couldn't I can see. complete the maneuver. Twenty seconds left in the second period. Still four to two. Spicel in the lead. Okay, Davidson's out of Michigan. They're the only Michigan team here. Right. And they've been perennial uh, visitors here for X number. Beautiful. Uh, go for the head if you can. Time out. Davidson was in second place coming into the finals tonight, but uh, this is the first finalist that we've seen from Davidson. Yeah, I think they'll be superseded. Unless they, I didn't see too much of them on the other match either. Mm. That wasn't good technique, our boy Spicel. Didn't stay, get back pressure there. He ran away. You got to get back pressure on escape from the feet. There it is, stay beautiful. Now executed that much more efficiently. Weissel has got a lot of slick moves. Yeah, he's a uh, complete wrestler. Mm -hmm. He leads five for the two. high school. Again, Spicel is ranked 16th in the country. There he's got him. Oh, should have had him on should've a blow. Followed up on that, right? Should have followed through. Right. Could have had him decked him. He likes that two on one. Let's see what he's going to do with it. Minute 25 left in regulation time. Spicel in the lead, five to two. Okay, we got a stalemated situation. You got a blow by it. Run it, run it, run it. Spicel's wrestling spaz spasmodically now. He's, uh -huh. not, he's letting the guy take over the sequence of the mat, putting the pressure on. He's kind of relaxing when he should yeah, be more Yeah, McDermott's aggressive. coming on. Yeah. Behind five to two with 50 seconds left of the match. Nice. All right, wait. See, he stayed on his knees. Once you get that leg, you got to rotate. You can't stay on the. He's got it. Sort of wrestling not to lose it, but he's still scoring. Yeah. Guys ahead, seven to two. Well, he had a sneaky lead. attack there. 25 seconds to go. He had a funny ride there. He had uh, the guy's wrist tied behind him. Got a seven and two lead with 10 seconds to go. So victory is almost surely assured. Oh? Well, when you think he's in trouble, he... No, he's all right. He, he, so. mm -hmm. As the match ends, the score is seven to two. The uh, tournament champion at 140 pounds, Richie Spicel from Brunswick. Got a well-built physique. At 152 pounds, we have Jared Kuser versus Jesse Dong. Jared was seventh in the A6 Bond Junior National Freestyle Tournament. Collegiately, he wrestled at Ohio State at 165 pounds. Jesse was also an OSU state champion in 2008 
After a successful career at Westville North, he attended Virginia Tech. He was a three-time ACC champion as well as a three-time NCAA qualifier. At Virginia Tech, he majored in management. Match of the evening. Take it away. Okay, Bob. At 152 pounds, a match of great interest to Central Ohioans and everybody in the state of Ohio. Uh, we're featuring the number one and the number two seed in the tournament. The number one seed is Jared Kusar, K-U-S-A-R, of Cuyahoga Valley Christian Academy. Uh, he is a senior, and he's wrestling the number two seed from Westerville North High School, Jesse Dong. Jesse took second in the state last year at 145. Kusar took seventh at 152. Okay, Dong was runner-up in the state last year. He got a hell of a double. Let's see uh, if he relies on that predominantly. Dong is, is ranked nationally 11th in the country this year, and he's committed to going to Virginia Tech. Wow, he's shooting way out. Beautiful. Connor there with a front headlock. He still got it, Dong. Hey, good job. Good job. All right. Kusar uh, withstood Dong's initial charge. Uh, hopefully, Dong saved a little of that energy for the highlights of this particular meet here. Dong has really dominated every match that he's wrestled in so far in this tournament, winning uh, by one pin, two tech falls, and a, and a, um, a major decision, 13 to two, in the semifinals. Oh, this guy's got a vicious front headlock. Gong had to be. Look at this, he's trying to high crotch off of a front headlock. That's amazing. Well, you know, this is an exciting match. Kusar has some very eminent uh, alumni there, weekly of Ohio State in the great Olymp uh, world game, Greco-Roman out of uh, Northern Michigan. What's his name, the guy? Well, he's a powerful uh, youngster, this Kusar. He's setting the course of the match. He's working off of Dong's shot. Oh, there, oh, uh, Dong. Dong missed the boat there, switched to... And that's two. He did that on... It sure, what he did, he rotated. Uh-huh, exactly. Took a two-point lead with 33 seconds left in the first He had to period. be awful strong to get that because he, he initially stalled, yeah. and then he recovered and rotated. That shows what happens when you keep driving, keep following through. It's a little high. That's good. Put that hand on the nape of the neck. The elbow there. Dong moves like a 103 pounder, wouldn't you say? Yeah, uh, yeah. He definitely uh, uh, has a lot of speed. Time runs out of the first period with Dong leading two to nothing. And his dad's across the way. You're from a distance, they almost look like twins. <laughs> okay, this is going to be the acid test. This guy's powerful. We're talking of Kusar. Yeah, he looks like a weightlifter, doesn't he? Oh, he hit a roll. He hit a roll. No, he's strong. He is strong. Oh, he is. This guy's really riding. I uh, see what uh, Dong isn't doing. He's not doing the Granby roll. Uh -uh. Just rolling without the Granby. All right. Dong takes a three to nothing lead on that escape. He had to work. A minute 20 left in the second period. See, he won't shoot because this guy's got a heck of a counter yeah. uh, front chantry series. So he's doing the right thing. He's fighting for inside position. Mm -hmm. That's good. Oh, no, 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 no. That's dangerous. You got to hope for a counter, I mean, for a stalemate. Yeah. 
And they called He's it lucky. pretty quick. Yeah, he is. 49 seconds left in the second period. Dong leads three to nothing. This is by all means the best match of the evening as far as uh, competitiveness, competence, and all out wrestling. Yeah. Both of these wrestlers are wrestling. Yeah, they're top notch boys. Wrestling well. A lot of action for 155, 152 pounds. What Wong is doing is a. What Dong is doing is getting inside control. See, inside. Mm -hmm. run! Oh, he could have knocked oh. him into the bleachers, though, if he yeah. would have ran him over. Didn't, didn't realize the, what he had. Didn't quite have the leverage, I don't think. Well, it wasn't that. He didn't know what he had. <laughs> well, All he had to do was kick him in the face with off his balance. knees. Just, just he, a bit, though, I think. Dong won't hold him. Uh -huh. He'll cut him. I would think so. Start of the third period. Oh, look at this! He got three to nothing. He's got intestinal fortitude. I didn't think he'd put the knees in, put yeah. the legs in. Let's see, even though. Oh, this is good now. Arch, arch. He's got an arch. He's not arching. Arch. He's still not arching enough. Ah, uh, he's a little uh, high. He's a little high. Oh, that's good. He's, he's still got... under his arm, which is yeah. good. As long as you stay behind the man's arms. Tony will call stalling quicker than any referee in the business. Uh, obviously. <laughs> That's... And uh, stalemates as well. Still three to nothing. Oh, oh was well. he lucky? I would say, oh my goodness, isn't that something? He's up against the power guy, but he had extreme balance then when he lost it. Yeah, yeah. That's what he's got to do. He's either got to cut him or float with him. That's good. He cut him. A minute 23 left in the match. Dong leads three to one. They're fighting for inside position. Whoa, this is exciting, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Power against awesome speed. Yeah. This could go either way, but but Dong is uh, Dong's got a circle. The better, the better wrestler at this point. Dong's got a circle. Mm -hmm. A minute left. It's funny how they're fighting for inside position there. Dong. Both solid wrestlers. Tony's going to hit him. Well, Dong's got a circle. He got a circle. 45 seconds left. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh oh, no, no. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, they, oh, they tied it up. No, he's ahead. Five to three. Two and two. Yeah. Call them. Oh, two and two. The game back points, right? Yeah. My bad. Uh, it was a nebulous situation because he really didn't have them. They were fighting for a position, but uh, in justification, the referee could call that. Dong uh, definitely put himself in, in a bad position. 23 seconds left. It's a one point match. You gotta hit a blow by. Long behind, five to four. Ten seconds left. What a great match. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic. It's a shame That's okay. anybody had to lose that one. Two fabulous wrestlers. Yeah. The cream of the crop. Six minutes of nonstop action. That was exciting. Dong's had to get a front chance reserve. Good call, Tony. Wow, that was... At 160 pounds, Chris Klein wrestled Zach Garbrandt. Chris, another Westerville North product, wrestled at the Ohio University. He was a 160 pound 
state champion, giving Coach Grant two state champs and allowing Westerville North to finish third in his team standings in 2008. Zach won the 2009 OHSSA state championship at 171 pounds. Worth coming up. Yep. Hey Bob, we're going to see now another 160, uh, another <laughs> Westerville North wrestler. Yeah, Klein's been a big disappointment. He's been winning all year and then folding in the state and sectional. Let's see if he can pull this off. He's a senior, I'm assuming. Yeah, he's a senior. This is another another match of two seniors. Also another match of first against second seed. Oh, he's got a toughie. Oh my, look at that. Yeah. This is, of course, Chris Klein of Westerville North, seated number one, a senior. Took second in the state last year at 145 pounds. And he's committed to Ohio University. He is? Yep, he's wrestling another Oh, Garbrandt beautiful, beautiful. From, from Claymont. He hit a single, converted to a double, uh, uplifted him, and took him to the mat very expeditiously. Yep. His opponent is Zach Garibrandt, uh, presumably uh, related to the other Garibrandt we saw earlier this evening. Oh, from uh, Claymont. The one that won the spectacular kid. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's a guy. It was also a Garibrandt. Uh, at this weight, Okay, Klein's got the experience. Uh, it's just a question whether he could convert it into a practical result. Yeah, I'm sorry, I take back what I said before about the placement. Uh, Klein was fourth in the state last year at 152 in Division I. His opponent, Zach Garibrandt, was fourth at 152 in Division II. So they both took fourth last year in the state tournament. Oh. Klein is undefeated so far this year. Garibrandt has lost twice. It's Garbrandt, I'm sorry, G-A-R-B-R-A-N-D-T. Uh, Garbrandt, Garbrandt. Uh, uh, Klein is a good, uh, what we call, uh, hand wrestler, though, breaking down, in other words, he's setting up. There it is, in other words, you got a double chantry there on that arm there. Mm -hmm. Switches to a leg insert. Klein holds a two to nothing lead as time runs out in the first period. Klein seated number one, Garbrandt seated number two. Both seniors. Claymont for a division two school has made a very, very impressive showing in this tournament. And, uh, uh, he's picked up one of the uh, assistant coaches has made uh, his present show. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at this. He's going for a cradle. Wow. That's and a, he may get it. That's pretty solid. He's got to go from side to side. Nah. Gave it up. He's okay. He got it. should be face locking right there. Face lock up from the ceiling. Putting on a quarter Nelson there. I think we got a stalemate here if you. Yeah. So a minute 30 left in the second period. Klein holds a two to nothing lead. Klein of Westerville North. I'll see what he isn't doing. Beautiful. <laughs> that was devastating. He went through the uh, rear door and elevated him and dumped him to the mat. Mm -hmm. But Klein held his position though, you notice when he came yeah. down. Well, one thing he didn't do right is there was too much space between his body and his mm -hmm. opponent's uh, posterior. Uh -huh. You gotta have your uh, addendum up front up against the man's posterior when you lift. But other than that, he made a fantastic uh, body lift there. Mm -hmm. Garbrandt looking for back points, but uh, not getting, not coming that close. Klein holds a two to nothing lead as, with 40 seconds left in the second period. Now what he's got to do is run it this way and take him the other way, see, for a cradle. He's got to run him towards us and then go 
run as much and then take him on over. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Well, look, looks like a, that's going to be a reversal. I think. Now that's interesting now. Uh, he's going to give him one. Yeah. No, he isn't going to get many. They're not, two seconds left. They're not going to, they did give the escape. Line that's two. questionable. I was sort of intrigued <laughs> by that situation. Though. I thought it was, that would have been my call. I'm not an it official. It was free, but, no. but then again, he reclamped them. It's, All right. it's hard to say that. Look at this. Whoa, oh beautiful. Oh, nice throw. Nice, re nice counter, huh? Well, the counter, but he didn't go hip to hip. See, he set up the original hip, but he didn't pop it to the other hip. Oh. That gives Klein a five to nothing lead. Yeah, but this kid made a period. nice throw there, even though he got stuck. Mm -hmm. yeah, Klein's working on a cradle, but gives it up. Again, both of these wrestlers took fourth in the state last year. Klein in Division One, Garbrandt in Division Two. Arch, 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 oh, go no. right angle. That, he didn't, he didn't go right angle. A minute left, Klein leads five to nothing. Score's a lot closer than that indicated, but uh, Klein is in charge. Garbrandt. Our reversal and back points could tie it up. And you'd have to give Garbrandt. I don't think there'd be much chance of that. Well, I'm not predicting it. I'm just saying that Garbrandt yeah. has the potential to do it. Yeah. Based on what we've seen so far in this match. are both a couple of pretty tough wrestlers. 20 seconds to, re to go in the in the match. Klein holds a five to nothing lead. I think Klein should finish third or better in the state. Oh, look at this. He might have a belated. Makes it a three, three point match. He took that face lock and took it from the ceiling and hit him with it. Mm -hmm. Chris Klein wins the 160 pound weight class of the Medina Invitational Tournament by a score of five to two. Klein again is committed to go to Ohio University next year. First. In the 171 pound weight class, Brian Roddy versus Keith Whip. Brian was a two time state champ and a two time Ironman champ with a 123 and 20 record. He was recruited by Northwestern and is currently an analyst for JLL, an investment firm. Keith was a four-time letter winner at Kent State. He, was, he also was a two-time MAC champion and a two-time NCAA qualifier. He is currently an account manager in Lewis Center, Ohio. Okay, Bob. This is the 171 pound weight class here at the Medina Invitational Tournament. This should be another good one. We're looking at the number one seed against the number three seed. Again, these are both seniors. The, the number one seed is Ryan Roddy from St. Ed's. Uh, he was a state champion last year at 171. His opponent is Keith, Keith Witt from Oak Harbor. A senior, took fifth at 160 last year. He's seated third. Roddy has committed to Northwestern University. And, uh, and Witt is going to Kent State next year. Oh my year. God, you see that fireman? Unbelievable. But he hit a double wrist lock on him and held it. Is he breaking the 90-degree plane there? Uh, 
it must be. That was a vicious. <laughs> concerted attempt. Roddy has had a somewhat uneven season this year. He has, who's beaten him? Well, he, he lost to a, um, a sophomore in the Ironman tournament. One of the most uh, discussed wrestling matches in the state this year. Uh, at one point, I believe he was ranked number one nationally, but uh, he's down to number nine. Still a very high place, and obviously he's a very, very tough wrestler. What isn't afraid of him, even if he's getting mauled? But he hit a fantastic hold. He hit a fireman's, actually. It can either a high crotch or a fireman. It yeah. was modified, but it was so vicious and effective. <laughs> Roddy leads 5-1. to one. 40 seconds left in the first period. Make that seven to one. See, there was back exposure, but he never called it. Well, he, he had exposure, but apparently not enough uh, time on it to award points. Oh, there was enough time. It was just that he didn't feel like awarding it. Yeah. Oh, beautiful face lock. Almost took his neck off. This guy's a mean, uh, He's tough. mean machine. <laughs> He's tough. He leads seven to one. Roddy from St. Ed's leads seven to one at the beginning of the second period. Roddy has been very impressive in this tournament so far. He won his first match by a tech fall. That was a score of uh, 22 to seven. Followed up by another tech fall, 16 to 1. Followed up by two pins, one at a minute 32, and then at a minute 25. So uh, he would be my uh, my nominee for wrestler of the tournament, outstanding wrestler up to this point. Not not as not as good. Oh, he's got a good. Mm -hmm. Ten to one. With a minute left in the second period. This is shaping up as a technical fall. Another tech fall or possibly even a pin. Who knows? Gonna cut him again. Witt's not backing down, but... Uh, well, Roddy does so good. He ties up, snaps, and goes. Yeah. Boy, he's a machine. Yeah, he is. Witt's a pretty solid wrestler, but he's not uh, a match for Roddy. Let's see if we can run that front headlock. No. Witt, in this tournament, actually, Witt has had three quick pins, followed by a major decision. His pins were at 55 seconds, a minute 13, and a minute 39, followed by a major decision, 11 to 3. So both of these wrestlers have been dominating their opponents up to this match. Are they dead, both of them? Huh? Both of them did. Before. Yeah, both of them. They both specialize in quick pins. 
I don't yeah. know if he's going to cut him again. Got instructions from the ball. He's had a little trouble the last 30 seconds on the feet. So at the start of the third period, uh, Roddy holds a 10 to three lead. Where's Oak Harbor at? That near Toledo? Oak, Oak Harbor. Harbor? Yeah, it's in the uh, northwestern part of the state. Okay. Produced a lot of good wrestlers up at Oak Harbor. Yeah. Uh, including uh, one J.D. Bergman. <laughs> Amen. See what the guy's finding out if he ties uh, Roddy's hand up, wrist. Roddy can't now see he's gonna be doing a good job there. Roddy had a busted. But what he was doing effectively is countering and getting Roddy's wrist so Roddy couldn't penetrate. Uh, action to slow down a little bit. A minute okay. left, a little less than a minute left. It's still a 10 to three match. Roddy in the lead. It slowed down because the kids found out Roddy if he tied up that right, left, right wrist, mm -hmm. he could nullify Roddy's power. I thought Roddy would come out with at least a 15-point margin. It looked that way uh, early Initially, on. Initially, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. You see how Roddy's exploded? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. This kid's finding out he could go with him now, but mm -hmm. it's a little too late. Little he gave too up late. too many failures. Five seconds left in the match. So Roddy. Roddy didn't take him down in the last quarter. Yes, uh, Brian Roddy of St. Ed's holds on for a 10 to three victory at 171. At 189 pounds, we have Cody Mag Magrum versus Richard Kirksey. Cody was a four-time NCAA qualifier for Ohio State University. He graduated with a degree in strategic communications. He also was a three-time OHSAA state champion. Richard was another phenomenal rest athlete from Davison, Michigan High School, both in wrestling and in football. He moved to Arkansas in 2008. Bob, we're coming up now with the 189-pound weight class here at the Medina Invitational Tournament, featuring again a number one against a number two seed. The number one seed should be exciting for Central Ohio wrestlers and Ohio wrestlers in general. This is Cody Mag Magrum from Oak Harbor, another Oak Harbor wrestler. He has committed to Ohio State. Again, we're looking at two seniors. All right, now what? Yeah, he, he, uh, wow. Isn't that interesting? This opponent. Well, he made two mistakes there. First, he didn't go into the man. Secondly, when they rotated, he should have overhooked there. Uh -huh. Well, his opponent is from Davidson, Davison yeah. rather, in Michigan. That's Richard Kirksey. Richard Kirksey, seated number two, another senior. on top. Looks like it be, it's going to be an interesting match. Here. I think so. Both of these wrestlers have done pretty well coming into this match. Uh, Magrum had a tech fall followed by a, a, a pin at 2 minutes and 45 seconds, followed by a major decision and another pin. Pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Kirksey. Started off with a pin, then a 19 second. The first pin was five minutes and 36 seconds, then a 19 second pin, and then a, then a major, uh, I'm sorry, not a major, but a near major decision at 12 to five, and a close match uh, at 11 to eight. Now, it's, uh, 
Oak Harbor coach is uh, Bergman's dad. Is he? I'm asking uh, Dad you. or his uncle or? I mean, a member of the family, I know that. Uh huh. I believe it's his uncle, but I'm not, can't swear to it. I like Kersey the way he's coming forward as if he's an attacker. Mm -hmm. He's up against Magnum, a pretty powerful youngster. Yeah, Kirksey leads two to one at the end of the, uh, as the first period winds down here. And Kirksey chooses down to start the second period. Good hand control. Hmm? Percy's a pretty formidable opponent, I can say here already. He is. We don't have he's not much a big. Of... He's not a big 89 pounder, mm -hmm. he's just light. What's interesting is that he wasn't the original 89 pounder that Davidson uh, enlisted the, uh, uh, in the early uh, Roster that they that they uh, provided. Josh Connell, an 11th grader, was supposed to wrestle at 189. Uh, trading off head shrugs, very ineffective. Magrum is ranked 11th in the country. Percy has very good, what we call balance there. I don't know much about Kirksey, but he's pretty impressive at this point. Score is still three to one. Kirksey of Davison in the lead. 45 seconds left in the second period. Working, trying to tie up the wrist. Got an underhook and a wrist tie up. Still got that wrist. Now he's got a two on one. What are you going to do with it? Well, that was a, that was a strong move. Hmm. Well, what we're seeing, power against speed here. Power in the personage of uh, oh, Magrum. Right. Oh. Speed I, and curses. Mm -hmm. Our producer reminds me that uh, this match will probably determine the uh, second place finish in the tournament. Uh, Davidson is currently one and a half points behind Claymont, but this is the last wrestler for either team to wrestle this evening for uh, first through sixth place. So uh, if Davidson wins this match, uh, they would presumably move into second place ahead of Claymont. Claymont making a very impressive showing for a Division II school. Right. Okay, we are see this is the third period. Oh boy, Percy hit a heck of a blow by. Got a front chancery, doesn't know what to do with it. You gotta snap it. Maslin Perry is uh, about five points behind Davidson at this point. And uh, does not have any more wrestlers wrestling this evening. Oh, go! No, he got to get to a double. He didn't hit a double. He didn't hit that double quick enough. He didn't transfer quick enough. Mm. Beautiful fighting out. That was. But it's all based on the premises. He was way in there, and all he had to do was hit that double, and he would have had him. An elementary move. Easy for you to say. <laughs> it's easy for me to say, but I mean the transition there, and if you're going to do a become a competent wrestler, that's one of the first things you got to learn, the transfer from a single to a double. I think we're looking at a little, since we have a few moments here, we can run down a little bit more of the team scores. Um, Westerville North has moved into 12th place overall, 7th place among the Division I schools, out of 20 Division I schools, uh, they're in 7th place, Westerville North is. Okay, we're down to the nitty-gritty with a minute left. 
Three to two, favor. 55 seconds left Percy in the third Davidson. period. So one point match. 45. 45 seconds left. She's trying to overwhelm the kid instead of using technique and then mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. Down to 30 seconds. Twenty-two seconds left. He's got a lot of talent, but he's nice. Drive, drive. Go, step in and throw. Twelve step seconds. In. Twelve seconds. Step in. Ten seconds. Eight seconds. Six. Four. That's three, what you gotta do. Two. Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! Unbelievable! As time runs out. Cody Magrum wins okay, by a score of four to three. I think what should have happened, one point should have been scored there, and then they would have gone to overtime. Well, uh, that was a legitimate takedown, uh, as, I, as I've seen it. What a, what a match. What a finish. And that, that does solidify, to the best of my reckoning, uh, Claymont's second place. Now what I'm getting at tournament. there, since you had that hold, it's called a two play, a front two play. Uh, you step way through that guy, then he, he would have hit a, a perfect throw. He still did it, but it would have been much more spectacular and much more efficacious, and it would have put him on uh, his back. Uh, it was a beautiful setup, but he couldn't execute it, except he did step across, but he didn't yeah. step in. Managed to do it right on the edge of the mat. And that's all that counts. What a finish. So, Cody Magrum wins by a score of four to three. At 215 pounds, Adam Kogar versus Cody Smith. Adam was a three-time state placer, winning, finishing second in 2008. He wrestled for, for Kent State University. Cody finished third at the 2008 state tournament. To win the uh, 189 pound championship. Now we're at 212, uh, 215 pounds. I am so excited, I uh, forgot what I was talking about. 215 pound weight class. We're looking at the number one seed, Adam Coger, C-O-G-A-R, Coger of Barberton, wrestling the number three seed, Cody Smith of Beaver Creek. Coger is a senior at Barberton High School. Cody Smith, just a junior from Beaver Creek. Coger took second in the state last year at 215 pounds. Cody Smith, did not even place in the district match uh, last year, district tournament. He did take fourth here at the MIT last year. Cougar is undefeated this year, 12 to nothing coming into the tournament. Smith had a nine to two record. Okay, at 215, Cody Smith. The Beaver Creek. He's the one with the fancy lettering, and uh, the other youngster, Coger, Adam Coger, has the big boo. <laughs> oh, he had more action off the mat than on the mat. <laughs> I believe that Beaver Creek is on our right as we look at them, I believe. Beaver Creek Beavers, sure. He's on the right. Now he's got that in there. Now he's got. 
And that's Adam. Oh, no score. That's the Barberton wrestler, Adam Koger, uh, the aggressor on that. If he would have floated off of his, out of his hips instead of his knees, he would have got that effortlessly. Hoger, a senior, versus Smith, the junior. Come on, Tyler, pull. So no score at the end of the first period. Since we have a, a moment, the fourth seed at this weight class was Tyler Huska. Huska. Yes, uh, from Medina Highland. Uh, presumably a relative of uh, uh, Ohio University's uh, former coach, Harry Huska. I don't know what the connection is. Well, Harry, if he's here, he's hiding in the stands. <laughs> he doesn't like to glare at publicity uh -huh. unless he controls every aspect of it. Forty-five years ago, you and I both watched Harry Huska wrestled at Kent State University in the NCAA championship match. Uh, he took a disappointing second place. Talked to him about it a few years ago. He said it was his only loss in college. He uh, was very disappointed in that match. I think he had one other loss. But Harry would have a tendency to minimize that. <laughs> Beautiful, but he would have clapped that. Come on, Adam, mix it up. So once so. you get a bear lock and you go beyond the man's point of uh, center of gravity, he's, he's, he's your man. I mean, you can do with him whatever, you can toss him into the bleachers. Now there, they've got to go with the right hip. Right hip, he's got a good headlock. Go to the right hip. That's finally, it. Yeah. yeah, finally. So, Cougar takes a one, one point lead, two to one. Oh. Okay, hey, it's a tremendous honor to have the opportunity to speak to Greg Erbus and his team here, the number one team in the number one state in the, in the field of wrestling. Coach, uh, you won the Medina Invitational Tournament once again. How does it feel? Feels tremendous. Uh, we had a rough outing the first couple weeks of the season, and uh, it's all coming together now, and I'm really proud of the young men. Well, you sure dominated this tournament. You had five champions, yes. which is awesome. Uh, I, I asked you earlier, and you had no idea how many times you've won this tournament, but it's been many, many, many times, hasn't yes. it? Yes, it has been, yes. This is a great tournament, we're lucky to be here. Well, I'm sure Medina, the officials, the uh, tournament people are, are thrilled to have you every year here. Um, now, you, you've been coaching at, at St. Ed's for quite a few years now. Yes, this is my 30th year. 30th year? Yes. Wow. And uh, plan to just keep right on going? We'll try. We're trying. <laughs> you also coach uh, football, football, I know. Freshman football, yes. Right, right. Um, how does it look for the, the rest of the season? Well, we got to stay healthy. we got to keep improving. But uh, things are, they stepped it up a couple notches. We're real happy with the kids. Okay. Well, we're so thrilled to have you. Uh, I've known you for several years. Yes. Uh, we've worked together on a lot of projects. Uh, I, I, it's been such an, uh, a thrill and an honor for me. Thank you. And uh, we want to wish you the best of luck. Congratulations once again. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you for talking with us. Thank you.